Hello, welcome back to We Build Stuff. On today's very special episode, I'm going to show you how I turn old cutlery into wearable rings using a ring bender and a few other basic metalwork tools. Now we are fortunate enough to have a superior ring bending tool by Pepe Tools. We recently got this for the Metal Shop program where we do art metal and a couple other things, but there are other versions that are not as expensive as this. We need something that could stand up to teenagers using it. We've got that. We also have a ring mandrel. I've got a set of ring sizers here to figure out our fingers. I may be using some pliers different size files to smooth stuff out and sandpaper. And of course, I need some cutlery. You could either find a proper size spoon, but I have a whole bunch of weird shaped, unique spoons that were donated to us. These look like the kind of things you'd find at tourist locations, and they've all got some pretty cool looking uh, shapes to them. But of course, any spoon with a cool pattern will do. I'm gonna start by figuring out what my finger size is, or maybe I've already done it, and figure out which one fits comfortably. Don't put all of them on, just put one on. The finger that I'm gonna be making a ring for today fits this one. According to this, it's a size 12 and a half. A size 12 and a half in diameter, apparently here is 21.9. I found a great site on the internet called Carrera Casting. They are at CarreraCasting.com, and I found a chart, a ring size conversion chart, that tells you the circumference, that's the, if you were to walk all the way around something, the circumference of a ring. Now I'm a 12 and a half, so I'm gonna scroll down, scroll down, and find my 12 and a half. 12, 12, about there, 12 and a half. It is telling me that it needs 2.7 to 2.73 inches of material. So using a ruler, I know that I'm gonna need 2.7-ish amounts of material to make this ring. I'm gonna go ahead and try to find something that's at least three, so that way I don't run out of material. If I have too much, that's okay, I can just cut it off. If I make it too small, well, it's hard to glue this stuff back together. So the chart told me that I need 2.7 inches of material. You can convert that to any unit you prefer, and it looks like that would get me Oh, not enough if I only use the handle. For this specific one, I've got a cool one with a, it uh, looks like the Grouse Mountain Skyride Gondola. This is from Vancouver, British Columbia, and I think I might try to incorporate that entire thing. I'm gonna go ahead and cut bigger than I need first, because I can always trim it later. Now, I want to protect my future ring from big scratches if, if I hold it in a vise. I'm gonna be chopping off the spoon end, and maybe I can save that for a future project. I'm gonna use soft jaws, or I can wrap it in some paper towel so that I don't mar the surface. Let's just do this for now. And then I'm gonna use a hacksaw to cut this off. I'm gonna cut it a little bit bigger on purpose. Doesn't that sound great? I'll save that for later. Now I've got roughly three and three eighths of an inch of material. I know that's gonna be overkill, so I think it's safe for me to maybe trim a little bit more off. Let's see, if I go exactly at 2.7 like it said, there's a chance that as I bend, it might not be big enough. But I think I'm probably safe to do it at around three inches or seven and a half centimeters. Music to my ears. Now this is gonna be super sharp on the end and I don't want too much blood today. I may have already had one issue. I'm gonna round this over with either something like a file or a power tool if I have that available. One of the power tools that we do have are rotary tools or dremels. I'm comfortable holding that by hand and using that to round over my edges. Not everyone has that kind of power tools, but files are affordable. You can usually get these for about five bucks, 10 bucks, 20 bucks, depending on what quality you want. Go ahead and round that over. We may end up having to still chop this smaller. You just don't wanna feel any sharp edges. Close your eyes, feel it, mm, good. I'm gonna go ahead and mount my Pepe Tools ring bender into a vise so it doesn't move. The way this works, it's kind of like a cam. This moves up and down and forces this piece to go back and forth. Now my size 12 and a half finger translates to 21.9 millimeters. Well, I think 22 will be close enough. That mounts into the front and has a matching part that goes with it. 
So that when you stick a piece of metal in there, ideally not your finger, it bends it around here. Now I can go ahead and put my spoon in there. Now I may end up having to trim a little bit off here, so I'm gonna start by bending roughly in the middle. Hold that in there straight, press, turn a little bit. Just move it around. Well, I'm starting to get crooked, so I need to straighten out there a little bit. And I'm just gonna work my way around this. And just kind of keep turning. Now, I'm not going to crush this down all the way yet. I want to see how close am I going to get so it's easier for me to get a file in there. Now, as you can see, once I get that thing wrapped, I have a feeling that that is going to hit here. I'm going to go ahead and trim this down just a little bit more with my Dremel tool. I am now back over to my bender. I can go ahead and finish this thing up. Give it a little extra there. It is a ring, but is it the right size ring? Currently this ring, well, it fits this mandrel perfectly, is not gonna fit my finger. It's sitting at a size 14 and a half. I need to bring it down to about here. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten that up with a different die. I've switched over to a size 20 to shrink this down a little bit more. Put it back in there, work your way around. But now, unfortunately, this piece is touching here, which means I'm gonna have to trim just a little bit more. So why am I showing all my mistakes? Or slow trial and error? Because that's how you learn. When you got a new tool, this is only my first week with this thing, you've gotta play with it a bit. Okay, so I brought this down to a 20. Let's see how much closer we are in the ring tool. I'm at about a 12, so it is extremely close. I'm gonna shrink it a little bit more. I'll move one size die down. The other way to do this is to just stick it on to your mandrel, and you can smack it with a hammer to get it a little bit smaller. Size 18 there on there now. I'm not gonna go all the way around, but just enough that it makes it a little bit smaller. Okay, that's with the size 18. With that slid on there, that got me at about 11. I can go ahead and stretch that out just with the hammer on here. And try it on until it feels comfortable. Oh yes! I can still bend my finger and it's not gonna cut off all the circulation. So there we have a super simple finger ring made out of a spoon or spoon handle in this case. It's especially cool when you can find ones that have neat designs in it. I've actually been on this gondola a few times. Growing up, I used to go to this mountain and do the grouse grind, which basically means you have to walk all the way up the hill or hike or run. But now you have to uh, take the gondola down instead of walking on the way back down. I'll show you a couple close-ups of some of the other ones we made, but that is my first impressions, my first week with the Pepe Tools ring bender. I know I have a lot to learn, but overall, I think that turned out pretty cool. So there's a couple cool rings that we've made. Each of them has a neat design, just out of old cutlery, spoons, forks, little handles like that. You can probably find these things at thrift stores, garage sales, estate sales. I've got a collection of these that I want to turn into different stuff, and I hope to film those projects too. So I have a whole bunch of different spoons and stuff. I've got a couple ideas of what I want to be able to do with these. Maybe that'll be future videos and I can see and try to make something interesting with these. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, leave a comment. I love talking to you guys. Have a great day.